couple of weeks ago now, I hosted my very first group ride, which was something I've been putting off for a long time, and I finally did it, and it was amazing. It was so much fun. We drank beer, we did skids, we ate pizza. It was sick. But as it was a special occasion, I felt like it would be quite a good idea to build myself something special uh, and kind of have a nice custom bike. Uh, the, I've had a bike build idea in my head for months and months and months. It was something I wanted to build in the summer, um, but it just never kind of came about. Never find the right bits, kind of just, just didn't really happen. But then I did find the bits and it did happen. And that's what this video is. Anybody who's been following the channel for a while now knows the Rally Mirage I built like two summers ago, I think it was. It was quite a long time ago now. Um, that bike was one of my favorite builds I've done to date. Um, most of my builds I build, I ride them for a few months, take them apart, change them bits, and then they become something else. That build lasted the full season, the full summer. I rode it a lot. The only reason I got rid of it was because it was slightly too big for me. Like, we're talking like an inch or two, to the point that it just like, just wasn't the most comfortable thing, but like the actual way it was built, the size of the frame, like it, I like the big bike, but it was just slightly too big. There's actually quite a few people that have offered me Mirages over the last few months, including uh, Frankie, uh, one of my followers over on Instagram. Uh, we've chatted a bunch about it and I will still be taking up on that offer, uh, but that was a slightly smaller one still, so that's gonna become more mountain bikey, bit more fun, so that will still happen. Um, but I did stumble across this. This was a Rally Moon Run, which I'd never heard of before, and I potentially bought it because of the name, because it's just weird and Rally. But it is a 22 inch frame, um, uh, and it's kind of perfect. I suppose I should just build build the bike. Should we build the bike? Let's build the bike. I tell you what, I'm actually quite excited about this. I feel like this is the first proper build from start to finish I've done in ages. Um, first things first was the decals. Uh, they kind of look cool, but they also looked awful. So I'm going to peel them off. The frame underneath looks kind of good. So I figured I'd peel them off and give it a bit of a polish and see if that makes a difference. But as you can see from this, it wasn't exactly an easy task and it took ages. Once I got all that off, it did leave quite a lot of residue, so I used some of this JL69. It's essentially a solvent that kind of helps break down any kind of grime like that. Um, bit of elbow grease, bit of that, and it all came off. Um, I did find quite a lot of rustiness around kind of uh, the edge, like the lugs and stuff. So I'm using this <laughs> rather crusty bottle of rust converter. Um, just dabbing it on with a cloth. Uh, and it kind of changes the rust to black. I've talked about this a lot in previous videos and um, you can also lacquer over it and kind of paint it and stuff so it's quite good. Uh, greasing up the head tube now, uh, ready for the headset. Quite a quite thick bit of grease there. Uh, but this is the headset I'm using. I've had this again knocking around for ages. I kind of want to go for a bit of a purple and orange anodized colour scheme which you'll see more as we go along. using the proper tools as always. Moving on to the other side and um, it's a little bit loose. So we'll move on. Um, on a fork, especially if you're using a fork that you've not used before, uh, you need to put a crown race, which is this bit here, which is essentially where the bearings kind of sit on and move around. Um, pro tip, only ever use it if it's got a slit in it like this. Reason being is the fact that if you're someone like me, you can take it back off again afterwards and reuse it. And it's much easier than one of the ones that's fully sealed. Uh, Spinder actually once cut one, so there was he made his own slit. So that's another thing to think about. Um, the fork itself, I know people are going to ask, and if I don't say it now, I'm going to forget. Uh, this is from uh, Medium Atelier, a uh, French brand. Uh, they make chain rings and other kind of components and hardware. Uh, I'll link them below, actually. They make some cool stuff. And they've actually just released some new chain rings. You've probably spotted the little black hanger that's hanging down there. So I am putting cantilevers on this uh, and a race face stem. This 
Niner uh, top cap that got sent to me um, by one of their reps. It essentially holds a little bottle cap on top, but I'll show you that probably near the end of the video. I put the bottle cap on, but it's it's sick. It's so, so good. Right then, this is a bike after all, so we should probably put some wheels on it. These are the Light Life Light Light Pro. I've forgotten what they're called. I've used them on nearly every build. I'll see if I can remember. But uh, essentially, these are already laced with some Panerace Gravel Kings, and um, uh, we're going for a uh, a 12, 11, 10 speed. Oh my God, what is wrong with me? 10 speed micro shift Advent X drivetrain. So hence the big dinner plate of a cassette on the back there. The Atelier Medium Fork that uh, is on this build uh, is actually just about to drop on their website. Um, they're going to be starting for the first week, it'll be 150 euros and then it'll be going up to 180. Uh, so if you are keen, again, I'll put the link down below, go and check them out. I now spend quite a long time taking this bottom bracket in and out of the bike. Simply being, I always struggle to work out the exact amount of spaces to have each side, um, and I often get it wrong and have to redo it, take it in and out, in and out, in and out until I kind of get somewhere I'm happy with it. Um, this one took way longer than usual. I don't know if this is a slightly more narrow frame than a lot of bikes, but um, whatever it was, it took me a hot minute to get it right. Uh, once I did get it right, it was smooth. Really, really happy that I actually kept going because, uh, yeah, and it looks great. Look at the chain ring and those bolts. The derailleur is the Advent X from uh, MicroShift. I've used this on a few builds now. I've used this one on at least two, and um, I love it. I think I'm gonna stick with this for a while now. Um, if you have a better idea though, do put it in the comments below, but I'm pretty, pretty set with this so far. You may have spotted a couple of times now that I'm using this multi-tool. Um, I have some very fancy lifeline tools that are amazing. I have some very, very fancy Allen wrenches that are amazing but I can't find a 5mm one anywhere. I've got it somewhere, it must do, but I just couldn't find it whilst I was doing this, so uh, that's why I'm using this stupid thing. There's definitely more purple anodized in the moment, so I thought I'd put some orange bolts uh, for the bolt cages. I'm only putting one bolt cage on here for now, uh, but it's good to have two places for bolt cages. I hate buying bikes that only have one, so just, just because. The bars I've chosen are the Richie Coyotes. Um, I've used these on a few builds now. These are the bars that I had on my 100 mile bike that I did for um, the 100 mile Essex ride. Um, they're very, very comfortable, really wide. Uh, so they're not really the best for city riding, but I think I'll probably take this bike a little bit gravel riding as well. So these, these were the right ones. For the brakes, uh, I've always wanted to try these Oryx ones. I think that's how you pronounce it, Oryx. Um, I ordered black, I got silver, and uh, so whatever. This is the part of the video where I usually tell you about one of the stickers that I'm kind of running out of and like, you must buy it quick before it's gone forever. Uh, but uh, everything's kind of, what I have is in stock. Um, so I'm just gonna show you one of my favorites in a moment, which is the uh, the Bulky Boys Bike Club sticker uh, in yellow. This one's been very popular. We did it in green, we did it in orange, now it's the yellow. Um, but I have a question for you. Because you all love this sticker so much, what colour do we do next? Uh, I've been pretty much doing whatever I fancied. Uh, so let me know down in the comments below which colours I should do next. Um, at the moment, you can get the Save Old Bikes sticker in yellow as well, which matches, which is pretty cool. Um, you can pick these up at safeoldbikes.com. Uh, but yeah, let me know in the comments what colour I should do next. Uh, and I'll do that. I then got a package arrive that literally arrived perfect timing 
This was sent to me by the guys at Manivelle. I think I'm pronouncing that right. I'm really sorry if I'm not, uh, but they were really kind enough to send me out uh, one of their beautiful baskets and also one of their kind of bags. Uh, the bag uh, is super, super nice. It's really kind of compact as well. Um, uh, so I'll talk about that more down the line. Uh, but the basket um, is made in Europe. And, like It is made by this a company that actually make shopping trolleys as well and oh my god you can tell it is so robust and amazing uh, but we'll pop it on the bike in a minute shall we the reason I busted open the basket at that point was because I wanted to grab this bit out. This is the kind of like uh, the bracket that goes onto the actual fork, um, mainly because I wanted to see how it looked with the cables for the canties. Um, as you can see, it's not the easiest thing because the cables won't go all the way through. Um, so I'm a little bit concerned about the, the 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 straddle cable. So I did have this. It's a hanger that goes directly onto the fork. Um, it's called, I think it's called a brake booster. It's made by Tektro. Um, so it is meant to also be quite good for the brakes, make them a little bit more stronger, which I can vouch for. I've got it on another bike. Um, so the idea essentially is to use this instead of the hanger that's on the headset at the moment. I don't actually have a lot of footage of this part, but essentially it doesn't work. The, the, you put the brake cable in part that part basically and um, because of the way the rack is it just it just won't work uh, so I had to order a longer cable straddle instead and um, then I was able to fit the basket look what I just bloody found five mil wrench so 24 hours later thank you Amazon I have a long straddle cable to set up the brakes um, I'm not going to go into too much detail on the actual fitting of the basket on this part of the video um, or this video at all I'm going to do a separate video on the basket completely because I want to kind of do a bit of a review so take it out for more riding test it out a bit and then share all my findings I've always fancied doing orange cables, um, but can never find orange cables that look nice. But uh, I found these ones uh, on eBay probably. Uh, and yeah, they look really, really good. Like super nice orange. Instead of just like a weird, like a, more of a red or a, more of a yellow, blah, whatever. Nice orange. I thought this little bit here was a hanger. It was on the Mirage, um, but I'm wondering if I had a special bit or maybe a, a bigger bit. I don't know what it was, uh, but it doesn't fit. So we're gonna have to come up with plan B. You guessed it, the fork hanger from earlier in the video. But seriously, I have this on the back of my um, uh, Scott Impulse. There you go, got there in the end. Uh, and it works crazy, crazy well. Um, it did take some serious fiddling to get it to work on this bike. I have no right idea why. I tend to always kind of take a lot of fiddling with brakes. I think it's because I'm a bit of a perfectionist when it comes to brakes. I like my brakes to work really, really well. But these I just couldn't get in. Uh, at one point, it was just finding it really hard just to get the cable in tight. Every time I tighten the bolt, it would then be really loose afterwards. I even at one point pulled out some zip ties to kind of hold it together so I could then tighten it. But that didn't work either. I shit you not, I just stopped recording, stood in front of the actual brakes, adjusted it a little bit, and that's perfect. It makes me laugh when people ask me what seat I'm gonna put on my bikes. Obviously it's a charged spoon, except when it's not a charged spoon. Today, I'm gonna to try out a turbo, because everybody tells me I should try a turbo. At this point, I realized that I had the longest seat post in the world and um, it actually bounces off the, the bolts. So <laughs> we need to cut this. I've been using these V8s quite a lot lately uh, and I really like them. I've always been a fan of the nuke proof pedals, um, but uh, I, I quite like a metal pedal every now and then. And these ones in particular have been running really smooth on the other builds. Uh, so I've got some more for this. I also got these uh, crank guards, um, 
only because they're orange. They're really cheap on Amazon or somewhere. I don't even know. Uh, and I thought they'd just add a little bit more orange to the build. So, uh, yeah. I think they might be a little bit too orange. Let me know what you think in the comments. This, These were probably a little bit too far. But uh, I did it anyway. So, this has never happened before. Generally... I always have to take links out of chains, but this one fit perfect, straight out of the packet. It's literally never happened before. Now the derailleur actually took a little bit of work to kind of get it to run smoothly. I adjusted it a bunch, uh, and even on the actual group ride, the first ride I took it out on, it still wasn't running quite quite right. Um, I've got a feeling there's a little bit of a kink or a bend in the hanger. Um, by my eye, it, it doesn't look that obvious. Um, so essentially, I need to take it apart and actually measure it and kind of like try and bend the hanger and see if that helps. Um, but so, but it, it's fine. It's just a little bit out. And the finishing touch was the DMR death grips. Uh, a little bit more orange, obviously, with these cuffs. And, um, well, that's it, really. We're finished. The two finishing touches I did forget to mention though was the actual bottle cup mounting and then this little pizza that uh, I stole this idea from Schoolyard Projects on Instagram. So uh, there we go. And that's that really. It was a really quite easy build. Nothing really kind of bit too hard. Um, but uh, it was super, super nice to be able to build something that's kind of like exactly what I wanted for a change. Like uh, a lot of the bikes I'm kind of like, it looks cool, I'm happy with it, but like, it's hard to kind of tailor the parts. Uh, this one is exactly what I planned and it worked. So, <laughs> makes a change for this channel. Uh, going into winter, usually my channel takes a little bit of a dip with builds, um, but uh, it won't actually this year because uh, I still have two builds currently that I'm working on that need to be finished right now. One of them I want to ride tomorrow, but I can't, I need to finish it. Uh, and the other one, again, really want to ride it the next day maybe i don't know i really want to finish these bikes so they are coming in the next few weeks so do stick around if you like build videos um but this is a bike channel we do lots of different bike videos um i've got a few reviews coming up i've got a few kind of i don't really want to share there's a lot of cool things coming in lots of tool videos and um some more stuff from juice lubes so uh yeah if you like this kind of thing feel free to subscribe to the channel uh, and if you can't wait till next week's video that's one it's a particularly good one. <laughs>